I've seen a shift towards the integration of firearms and empty-handed tactics in recent years. Is this the right direction for law enforcement? Rich, this is right up your alley, bud. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been policing longer than I have, so you understand and, and can agree. I'm sure that several years ago, it was the firearms instructors, and then it was the defensive tactics instructors. The firearms instructors were kind of the tackleberry guys, right? The gun nuts, the hunters, and then, uh, oh, good call, Wes. And then the uh, You probably the ought to explain who tackleberry was to some of our viewers. <laughs> the defensive tactics. Yeah. Yeah, I'm too young to know. <laughs> yeah. The defensive tactics guys were the martial artists. And, um, you know, the answer to every problem for the firearms instructor, the guy tries to disarm you. I'll just shoot him. Not necessarily. You know, that being said, the flip side, the defensive tactics guy, well, I'll disarm that guy. Well, why would you disarm him if you could use your firearm and handle that problem at a further distance? It's all one fight. I think, Wes, you, you alluded to that earlier, that uh, you may be mid-fight and have to get to your gun. Uh, or you may have to have an empty-handed response first. I'll tell you something else. Both of you guys know this. Handgun wounds are something like 80% survivable. And oh, even if they turn to be it's fatal... It's more in the 90 percentile. It's not going to be immediately fatal necessarily no. unless you get a, you know, a, an immediate physiological stoppage, which isn't likely. You're going to have to have tremendous shot placement for that to occur. It'll be a psychological stoppage which, of anything. Which means, what do they say? What does someone do after you shoot them with a handgun? Same thing they were doing before you shot them. So just because yeah. you shoot them does not preclude you from having to fight them. Well, I, you know, and, and what I see, and I still see it to this date, not in every, not every jurisdiction, but certainly enough around the country that it's still a problem, is there's still a divergence between those two. And there's, there are places where those two have melded together, where the firearms and the DT guys are one and the same. Um, but, but even on that same side, from the firearms perspective, talking on the physiological side, I watched these guys go out and shoot, and I had a whole department here recently in the last two, three months, where everybody would shoot this inanimate, unmoving paper target, and then track the imaginary target to the ground. I said, what are you guys doing? Well, I'm tracking him as he's going to the ground. How many people have you shot? Because they don't always go to the ground, you know. I've, I've seen guys run off and disappear. It's, what do you, you, you are you conditioned to they track? Look like an old water pump handle. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you can't tell what they're going to do when no. you shoot them. You, no more than you can tell what's going to happen you, when you hit them. You stay right. on them, and then whatever they do is what you do. Yeah. But yeah. You're absolutely right. You know, I came from an agency where we had a firearms instructor, a defensive tactics instructor, a pepper spray instructor a traffic stop instructor, a cultural diversity instructor. They just happen to be the same guy. <laughs> yeah. Cultural diversity. Huh? You know what? I look back on it now. Yeah. Sensitivity. Look, uh, better guy. <laughs> Actually, here I am. You know, but I look back on it now, even though it was a lot of work for me, I realize it made me a more well-rounded instructor because when I'm talking about the gun, I'm starting to thinking about, well, wait a minute. What if it starts out as a fist fight? And let's face it. Armed citizen, law enforcement officer, a lot of gunfights start out as a fist fight. Oh, yeah. I'll tell yeah. you what, an armed citizen has even a greater need for empty handed skills because he doesn't have a taser, he doesn't have backup, he doesn't have a vest, he doesn't have a radio. It's him with a, le a lethal force option, easy for me to say, apparently I need some more tool, more do. A lethal force option and his hands, that's what he has. Well, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, what kind of training should I get? And the first thing I tell them, because they want a gun training, they want to do a gun training class. And I say, no, you need to get an open hand skills class. And the, the best stuff I've seen is, is the Kelly McCann combative stuff, yeah. which I know you're doing yeah. a lot more of. Exactly. That World War II elbows, knees, hammer fist, that is some of the best stuff. And you can learn it fairly quickly it's without a lot of repetition. Well, I, like, I, like I like how it's cycling back. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. gross motor base. It's like those skinny ties finite. we used to have. It's all coming back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, there was a quote, and, and it's, it's kind of on topic, off topic, but you know, a long time ago, the very first annual conference that the NTOA ever did was in Albuquerque. And I can't remember the instructor's name, but we were all working a, a sub gun class or something on the range. And it was something about engagement on a target and then keeping your eyes on the, on the target, waiting for that next threat. And what the guy said was, we all have these neighborhoods where if you fire one round off, a hundred people will drop to the ground because they're conditioned to drop to the ground. It doesn't mean that you've shot a hundred people. So to expect what somebody will do in a, in a conflict, there, we all have those neighborhoods where 
it's very unpredictable to the point of predictability because they're all used to hearing it. They deal with this much more frequently than we do or anybody else does. That's like the old adage, hey, if you strike someone with the palm heel and the nose, you're going to shove that bone into the brain and kill them. Okay. Where, yeah. Where's the nose bone that everybody's talking about? <laughs> yeah, so I've had mine broken three times and, and it, it hasn't are. ended up in my brain yet. Yeah, yeah. Not that I know of anyway. Well, if you've ever hold a human skull, you could burn hell's that nose bone, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Good stuff, yeah. guys. Good stuff.